This summer, Senna, Elisabeth and I decided to go to Fontainebleau for the first time. It's a small town, 70 kilometers from Paris, and it's surrounded by forests with amazing climate. I'd say there's about 20,000 boulder problems to be found in the forests of Fontainebleau. And there's something for everyone. There's something for beginner climbers, kind of like us who've been climbing for a couple of years and are trying to get into outdoor climbing a little more. And there's something for the true professional who's looking to crush their next project. Above all, it's only a four hour drive from where we live in Belgium. So we decided to rent a car, put some crash pads in it, grab the tents and drive south to Fontainebleau to climb for three days. On the first day, we visited Elephant, a climbing area in the south of Fontainebleau, which is technically in the Forêt d'Omagnal de la Commanderie. So not really Fontainebleau, but we thought, whatever, let's go climb. We decided to warm up on something that looked like a natural spray wall with these huge, big jugs that we could really try out the movement on. Next, we decided to go look for some slabs, some easier slabs to really get used to the texture of the sandstone. And afterward, we decided let's go and we tried some overhanging routes and we soon discovered that the font grading is pretty tough and we were going to have our work cut out for us. Sana and I climbed the same projects pretty much, uh, the same problems, so we could help each other out with the movement. And as we rested, we could help Lizzie out and coach her through her first outdoor experience, really. And it's cool to see how quickly she adapted. In the gym, she had never really smeared on the wall, but here she was forced to do new techniques and climb in a different style than what she's used to. And she was a true warrior. It was really inspiring to see. On the second day, we met up with Mike and Robin, two friends who were also climbing in the area and who had been to Fontainebleau before, so they could kind of show us around in some other areas than Elephant, where we climbed the first day. We met them at Monnery, where they were trying some harder projects, some like 7D overhanging stuff. But Senna and I decided uh, not to get fixated on hard stuff immediately and just try to climb as much as we could on this weekend and see a lot of different areas. That was really our goal. We warmed up on some slabs again and then went to Good Vibrations, which is this huge slab of rock that is hidden somewhere on the shoulder between two high points. And on that rock, there's a project that Mike was working on. He's trying a variation of the climb that is 7A, and it starts in this cave. It, it's super overhanging, uh, and it's pretty long, actually. Senna and I, we tried the second part of the climb, which is graded 6A, and it starts as soon as you reach the head wall. It's a pretty cool climb. It starts with a heel hook. It has a lot of different grip types and a lot of different holds, like half crimp, and then you get into this pinch, but you have to move to the sloper next. It's really cool. Uh, before you get into the messy section, where it's not really obvious what you have to do and you kind of have to, I don't know, power through until you walrus your way up uh, and top out and enjoy the view pretty cool, much. Cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. Come on. That's super. It's pretty much thanks to Mike that uh, I managed to climb that because he really motivated us to, to push hard uh, on our first weekend here in Fontainebleau.
Lizzie also sent a cool boulder at Monori. There was this pretty technical climb with wide feet that forced her into very acrobatic positions. And it's cool to see like as soon as her intuition kicks in, she can kind of switch off the overthinking mode and just send it. She's way stronger than she thinks. After Monori, we rested up and in the evening we went to Mont Pivot. Hi guys, welcome to the area uh, Mont Pivot. Currently we are trying this project named La Belle Gueule. It's is graded 7A in pond grade. And here on the right side you have Sam, which is trying the start moves. The beta I'm trying is a right hand in this kind of double finger pocket. And then like a pinch slash half crimp thing. <laughs> then a right foot here. The left foot pushes out that way on this nothing thing. <laughs> and then you send the right hand to the pocket right there. It was way too hard. It was pockets, it was super high, super scary, but we managed to try some of the moves, so it was still fun. And it's just super cool to see the forest in the evening and kind of explore another region of Fontainebleau. On the last day, we went to Roche au Sabot, which is a more popular area because it was super gorgeous. It was a mix of pine trees and sand. It reminded us of Elephant, which was already a nostalgic thing for us, although it was only two days ago. At Roche au Sabot, we decided to climb as much as we could before we were completely spent and kind of were forced to drive home. Robin and Mike were trying a 7A, pretty rough project that Robin ended up sending. It's like one big move to this ledge and then you mantle your way up there. It's super, super gritty. It was really cool to see them uh, push their limits. Mike ended up not sending it, so he's super pissed. He had to, he had to kind of go cry in the corner and close. But he's fine. I'm sure he's fine. Uh, I, but he has quite big apron. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Senna and I, the highlight of Rocho Sabo in that last day was probably Little Crack. A pretty cool climb with uh, a lot of variation in the moves. Every next move felt different from the previous one. It starts low, you get into this double undercling before you move out left into the crack, and you can't really jam it. So you kind of go elevator door style and pull out before you send up the right hand fix your balance and just send it to this final jug that's pretty high up and pretty much nice. there before you mantle out another Nice! Yeah. But be careful, mantling stuff in Fontainebleau, it's like a sport on its own. It's pretty tough. It, it, it's like half the grade is mantling. 
Now at a different section of Fontainebleau, and I just did this bad boy. Um, this one is a yellow one, and it was very fun. And yeah, it's not on the map, so it doesn't have a name. Oh yeah, it's not on the map though, so um, I'm calling them nameless bad boy. <laughs> We wrapped things up with some slabbier climbs until we were too tired to keep climbing. So we packed things up, jumped in the car, and drove home pretty much. Our three days in Fontainebleau were magical, and it's kind of an overused word when it comes to Fontainebleau, but it's just spot on. And then I'm talking about the full France in summer experience. We went to have breakfast at the small bakery, had our croissants, our pain au chocolat. As Belgians, we know how to appreciate the French cuisine. It's kind of the best thing about our southern neighbor. It was super fun climbing with Mike and Robin. Uh, I want to thank them for their patience and, and the sharing of their know-how and kind of guiding us through the, the second day uh, in particular. We saw a bunch of different sections of the forest. We ate well, we got tired, we went home. We had a lot of fun. Thank you.